is a big, big ant right here. Look at that. That is a bullet ant. I'd be asking Spencer, this is a highly painful sting, right? Well, why do you have it so close to your finger? In fact, I might even go ahead and free handle her. In the most biodiverse spaces on the planet, every creature is engaged in a constant struggle for survival. With countless niches to fill, the animals of this jungle have evolved a wide array of cunning defense mechanisms, from camouflage to venom. Some of the most creative survivors in the cloud forest in just about every habitat worldwide are the ants. A single individual doesn't amount to much, but they find strength in numbers and cooperation. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and it's my mission to uncover the secrets of the natural world, including the many secrets that these fascinating insects have to hide. On my last day in the cloud forest, I've got a very particular ant on my radar, one that claims to be the king of sting and one of the most painful insects on the planet. Why do they have such powerful stings? And is their venom dangerous to humans? As I hunt for the infamous bullet ant, these are the questions that are swirling in my mind. And with any luck, we will find our answers deep in the Ecuadorian jungle. So far, nothing. You said Emilio said the nest was this way? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we had a lot of rain yesterday, so it's possible they'll be out moving, like the nest may have been flooded out, so we don't even actually need to find the nest. The closer we get to it, the higher likelihood we actually see some workers out foraging. The colony works as one super organism. One individual is just kind of a cog in the machine in the ant world, and these workers will go out to forage for food, supplies, all kinds of resources the colony needs to survive. And that is one of the reasons why they have such crazy stings. Ants across the board use their stings for two reasons. Primarily, actually, to subdue prey items that they could bring back to the nest, which means their venom needs to actually be pretty decently toxic, and two, to actually defend their nest from potential predators and invaders. And the bullet ant is pretty toxic. A chemical's toxicity is measured in a lethal dose, or LD50, and pretty much any compound with a lethal dose below 500 milligrams per kilogram body mass is considered to be highly toxic. For reference, most venomous snakes have an LD50 below 10, with some of your more infamous rattlesnakes clocking in somewhere between 0.5 and 2. The bullet ant in question today has an LD50 of 1.4. For reference, it's pretty darn close to the fertile ants viper, which is one of the deadliest snakes in the Western Hemisphere. These guys are no joke. And that's the thing, a lot of insects out there are vastly underestimated. We see them as these tiny, unassuming creatures, or maybe even pests, but they actually have all sorts of crazy biological secrets that science is still working to unlock. My goal is to study these really awesome creatures and share the secrets they have with you. Because like, what's the point of learning something if you're not gonna tell somebody else about it, right? So if you're new here and that's something that you're enjoying and you wanna see more of, consider subscribing. Every Saturday evening, we have new discoveries and we'd be really happy to have you. As we hiked along the trails, there were plenty of other odd insects out, some of which were certainly too cool to pass up. Oh, hey, Spencer. What? I have something I think you're gonna like. Yo. Come here, dude. Wow, look at this guy. I'm just gonna fly. Nice. Well, look at that. That is a pretty grasshopper. That is one of the craziest looking ones I've ever seen. Now, this is probably some kind of lubber grasshopper. If I can ID this a species, you'll see it on the screen right now. Look at the coloration on this thing. Now, with the greens, it does have a little bit of camouflage, but those yellows stick right out. And I would have to, have to guess that it's mildly poisonous. It's not venomous. It's poisonous. I'm completely safe holding it in my hand right here. It's not gonna bite me or sting me, but if I were to eat it, I can get very sick. Now, fortunately, I don't eat grasshoppers. I don't know if you eat grasshoppers. Location. <laughs> but, wow, great spot. That was awesome, dude. And uh, let's see if this trail yields anything a bit more venomous than a grasshopper. Insects along the side of the trail can be a good sign because the bullet ant is a predator. In these forests, they're actually known to target glasswing butterfly larvae, which is very promising given that we've seen quite a few adults. As we approached the spot where we were tipped off the nest was, I got a glimpse of a giant ant crawling on the vegetation just off the path. 
is a big, big ant right here. That's a bullet. Look at that. The nest must be around here somewhere. You are coming with me just for a little bit, buddy. Squeaking. Look at that. That is a bullet ant. I'm gonna take her out really quick. Now, I said her, because most of these workers are female. In fact, males, you're only really gonna see during mating season, they'll be heading out to look for freshly hatched queens to form new colonies. Look at the size of this ant. This is not like the tiny little ants you find in your backyard. This is a huge, huge ant and if you've if you've not been living under a rock you probably know the formidable reputation of this insect on the schmidt pain index this is known to be the most painful insect sting on the planet how about that that is a true force of nature right here on this leaf you gotta make sure you respect the bullet ant now these ants unlike a lot of insects you'll see out here they actually don't function as an individual the colony is like one huge, huge organism. And what she's probably out here doing is scouting for resources that she'll bring back to the colony. You can see she's probing out those antennae. Ants, they can see, but their primary way of interacting with the world is through chemical trails and smell. These guys have one heck of a robust communication system, leaving all kinds of little pheromones and chemical trails that help them find their way back to the colony, help other ants find them. And if they found something cool while they were out, they can also come back out of the colony to investigate whatever they found. And that is really, really incredible. They can use all those different communication methods. And it's almost like a form of like group intelligence. It's really, really insane. I'd be asking Spencer, this is a highly painful sting, right? Well, why do you have it so close to your finger? In fact, I might even go ahead and free handle her. Because while they may have a formidable reputation, we... Take her out real quick. What you will see is that they're actually not that mean. And I see this with velvet ants. I see it with harvester ants. A lot of these insects that have notoriously painful stings they know it. They know that they are forces of nature. You can see right there, they actually will not use it unless you really give them a reason to. Now, fire ants and stuff, those, those will sting you for no reason. They're actually pretty mean. But that bullet ant may be one of the most fearsome insect in the world. But look at her, walking around, just investigating an absolutely beautiful little insect and wants to do me no harm. There are so many creatures we fear, right? Spiders, snakes, wasps. Because of those bad reputations, we think they're aggressive and we go out of our way to kill them. But if we take time to sit there and actually observe them and, and just kind of ask questions about these kinds of creatures, you'll find oftentimes the truth is a lot less sinister than urban legends would have you believe. This little ant right here wants nothing to do with me. I am way more dangerous to this individual than she could ever possibly be towards me. She wants to get back out into the wilderness, find her way back to her colony, and she'll probably report that she had a weird interaction with a giant human, but not something that wants to fight or wants to stay. And a true, true marvel of Ecuadorian wilderness, something I've always wanted to see. Look at that. I actually considered testing the sting for myself, but as is typical in the Ecuadorian cloud forest, the sky opened up on us. As it's our last day in range of these insects for the trip, the question of how bad their sting actually is, is one I'll have to answer one day in the future. But for now, I think we can all appreciate a fleeting encounter with a beautiful creature from the secret world. These ants have an incredible defense mechanism, but as long as they aren't provoked, they won't be inclined to use it. Another group of ants known to have a really powerful sting are the harvester ants, and drop for drop, they are among the most toxic insects in the world. In the southeast US, we actually have one of these ants, and its venom 
is even more potent than that of a black widow. If you want to learn more about those incredible insects, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.